last lecture we have seen about how to define the variables, right? That we have seen define the variable, right? Or we can say the declaration of your variable, then assign the value to particular variable. Okay. And after that, you need to access that value. Okay. Access that value. Then after that, you can perform the operation. Okay. So you can perform the certain operation on the given data or on the values which are stored into your variable. Okay. So for that, to perform specific operation, you need to use the specific operator. Okay. So you need to use this operator to perform the operation on your variable, or we can say it is a operator. Okay. So that part we will see a little bit later on. But uh, now what we want to say that so we have defined the variable of each data type. Okay. So what uh, how many data types are available in Java? Anybody can tell me how many data, data types? Sangha. How many data types are available? How many primitive data types? Okay, so Java is purely says that it is a primitive data types. Okay, so which are the primitive data types available in Java? Anybody can say. What are the primitive data types? What are the names of the primitive data types? Uh, Boolean, numeric, character. Yes. yes. Boolean. Yeah. Boolean, numeric. Double. Double. Very good. In short. That's very nice. Thank you, your shop. Okay. Float. Float. Very good. Long. Long. Yeah. Very good. Because I love it. Byte. Very nice. Exactly. Okay. So total eight different primitive data types has been present in Java. Okay. And for each primitive data type, it has a separate wrapper class. Okay. Have a separate wrapper class. So, what do you mean by wrapper class? A wrapper means what? You know that uh, whatever you are trying to purchase from your uh, shop, at that time, uh, most of the foods, junk foods, okay. So they are wrapped with some uh, materials. OK, so inside that uh, packet, uh, there is your food surface. OK, so that kind of wrapping means it is a one type of protection is given to that particular food. Similar manner. So to make the Java simpler to the programmer. OK, so Java has developed the wrapper class for each primitive data types. OK. So before the Java, this uh, some of the data types was present like INT, CAR, CLOET, LOG, okay, Boolean. Like this, this was the data was uh, data uh, data type was present in C or C++ language, okay. But you know that Java is pure object oriented programming language. So it, it, the question may be arises that. If we can say that the Java is pure object oriented language and anything is accessed by the uh, the object only, then how we can declare this variable without declaring the object of that particular class? OK, so for that Java has been developed the wrapper class for each primitive data types. OK, so internally Java has been take care about the uh, the 
creation of object internally okay and they will try to give you the access of that particular object uh, the value of that particular object without you you not uh, without creating the object by the programmer okay so that kind of things has been happened under the wrapper class okay so this wrapper class is two type so we can say auto boxing auto boxing and another one is unboxing okay so auto boxing means what we can try to convert the object into the wrapper class okay object into us and this wrapper class here wrapper class to object okay so you need to convert the your value into the object and object value into the your uh, we can say the in the form of your uh, data type okay so at the time the auto boxing and unboxing will be happen automatically so that will be take care by your java interpreter okay so it will be all these things uh, take care by your compiler and your interpreter okay so don't worry about what will happen in auto boxing and unboxing so if we will get the time uh, to elaborate these things that we will see a little bit later on okay but the wrapper class for each and every data type there is a specific wrapper class okay so let's see what is the wrapper class for each data type okay just simply i will arrange all these type into the ascending order okay so this is Right. So for Boolean data type, there is a Boolean wrapper class. Okay, so you know that Java they use a naming convention. Okay, so for that, whatever the name of your class, it, it is always the first letter will be always a capital letter. Okay, so Boolean class, Boolean wrapper class. For for character, there is a character wrapper class. For byte, there is a byte wrapper class. And for short, there is short wrapper class. For integer, I N T E G R. This is a wrapper class. For long, yellow N G. Okay. And then for float, there is a float wrapper class. And uh, double, there is a double wrapper class. Okay. So some some uh, some of the students can may ask a question. Okay. So uh, these uh, the auto boxing and unboxing will be happen by the wrapper class automatically. OK, so what is the use for this wrapper class for us for the, the programmer? OK, so this is the use of this wrapper class when you want to convert the one data type value into the another data type. OK, so at that time uh, we, we need to use these wrapper classes. OK. For example, you want to convert the short data type value into the byte or byte to the short, short to the integer, integer to long, long to integer, float to double, double to string. So as per your convenient, you, you need to convert the specific data type value into the specific format. At that time, we are always try to use these wrapper classes. OK, so let's take an example for these wrapper classes. So we can define the class. You can say the wrapper. Okay. And save this program. Okay. And given method.
Okay. Word. Uh, now you want to use the one wrapper class, for example, integer integer i equal to integer. Okay. So in this manner, we can define the class and we are trying to define the value for that particular class variable. Sir, to screen screen share ke liye. Yes. Screen share. Ke liye ga. Oh, can you Baki chana this at Screen. This is screen. Sir, everything. Kadi kadi network sa issue asla na tumse side la. Sir, mangte aves thoda sa late this the screen. Okay. Then parat kya karta hai? Ek ja stop par to sharing and parat reshare kar. Okay, sir. Okay. So is it visible now? No, sir. Like, tumche end la kai tere network se issue aaste. ठीक है. थोड़े वेल दिस एक्साम्पल. हो सर. So I will perform. Just I will uh, try to display the value of that particular object of the wrapper class integer. I will just execute this program. So go to the command form, type CMD. Okay, so this command form will be open. Now just type the Java C and name of your file wrapper or Java. Okay. Okay, so what will happen here? An integer has been deprecated and marked from a removal. Okay, so that kind of error can be given. Okay, so I think in the previous version it was not there. So we are using the latest version. Okay, so you can check the the latest version of your Java like this. Okay, so what is the version you are going to use? So Java space minus version. So you are going to use the this version, okay, which was released on this date, okay. So uh, in this version, I think uh, they they are trying, going to remove this uh, version, uh, this package or this class, okay. So uh, whenever such kind of error has been occurred or warning has been occurred, means what? They are trying to remove deprecation means in the next version that value will be removed completely and instead of that another thing another class or another uh, method or another package may be come okay or maybe some alternative uh, solution has been provided by the java for the deprecated classes or the deprecated methods okay and compile your program by minus d okay. I forgot to be shortcut key. I will just compilation. It's a warning, okay? So if warning is there, there is no problem. But we can compile that deprecated value by a specific shortcut command.
Okay, so before going to compile, we need to use client application, then the wrapper dot Java. Okay, so this way also you can compile your program. So you can see that. So whenever we are getting such kind of warning, this is not a error. Okay, so if uh, the warning is appear, means uh, your class file has been generated. Okay, and uh, you can also able to execute the program okay or or you can use like this also java c java c minus x l i n t colon deprecation wrapper dot java okay so this deprecation means what it is available in this version but in the upcoming version it can be removed okay so uh, just i will uh, copy this one okay so I will just keep this one for compilation and let's check whether the your class file has been created or not. So w star dot class. OK, so here you can see there is a wrapper class file has been created. OK, although it has given the error like this. OK, so one warning is there. So warning is removal integer int has been deprecated. OK, now you can execute your program. Java wrap. Okay, so you will get the value here. Okay, so in this manner, you can compile and execute your program, uh, although it is a deprecated file also. Okay, so this in this manner, you can also compile. Okay, so we will again uh, modify your program and we will try to define the the one variable uh, of short, okay, for example, yes, it's going to go new short. Okay, and we want to just print the value system dot out dot print element and value of s. So instead of 10, we will use the another value 20. Okay. Just compile your program Java C. Now I will just copy this Java C minus X line deprecation wrapper dot Java. Okay. So we will then press enter. Okay. So here, such kind of uh, in detail information you will get. No suitable constructor found short. Okay. Constructor is not applicable. Possible loss you can get from integer to short. Okay. So there is there is a problem. So while defining the uh, this kind of uh, object of short. Okay. So just to use the wrapper class to try to convert the value of so this is the another error this is not a error regarding the the deprecation but it is a different inner error no suitable constructor found for short integer okay so whenever you are trying to define the object of short class so at that time there is such kind of Constructor is not present. Okay, so we will just simply try to create the the constructor and try to create the object. Then we will try to see what happened. Okay, so one error, one warning. So error in this. Okay, uh, in the short wrapper class, this constructor is not available. Okay. So we will just try to create the object in of this. Maximum value is one thing to say. Let's see what will happen. Okay. So now there is no error. Okay. So sometimes there is no need to use the new uh, as a keyword while declaring the object of that particular class. Okay. 
just execute it. Our wrapper. OK, so you will get the value like this. The first value of integer wrapper class I and short wrapper class yes. OK, so here you can remember that the yes of the short is capital, not in a small case. OK, so if I write it into the small case, it will look like this. OK, so the color of this will be changed. OK, so I will use yes one. I will just try to put the value. Okay, so yes one. Instead of this, I will change the value. For example, minus one twenty eight. Minus one twenty eight. So in this way also we can create the object. Okay, so. When we are trying to define the value directly on the object of the short class or the object of the short wrapper class, uh, at that time automatically the conversion will be happen without using the new keyword. Okay, so that's why it is called as a auto boxing. Okay, it is called as a auto boxing, and sometimes you need to use another variable, for example, integer num1 is one variable and on this variable we are trying to assign the value of i okay then num2 value of s okay and we want to just print this value the first value Value of num1 equal to plus num1 okay and value of num2 equal to plus num2. Okay. Just recompile your program. Execute it. Our wrapper. Okay, so here you can see value of num1 is 10 and value of num2 is 127. Okay, so when such kind of assignment will be there, so it is called as an unboxing. Unboxing means what? You are trying to convert the object value into the primitive data type value. So that is nothing but the unboxing. Okay, so uh, in this manner, you can use the wrapper class and create the object of each wrapper class. Okay, so by using new keyword or directly you can initialize the value. Okay, so now uh, we want to take the specific data type from the user. So for that, you need to import the certain packages into your program. Okay, so for that, uh, uh, you need to add the package by using the import statement okay so here uh, just i will give the name read the data from user okay so to take the input from the user to the keyboard or from various sources so at the time in java for each type of source uh, for each different class has been defined okay for example when we want to read the input from the command line at the time we need to use the system dot in okay as a parameter to receive the data okay and sometimes when you want to read the data or take the input from the file so at that time we need to use the file stream class. OK, so there is a very uh, big hierarchies of the input and output stream. OK, so the whenever you want to receive the data and give the output after processing that data. So in Java, there is a hierarchy that is called as a, the input stream and output stream. OK, so on the basis of which kind of data we have, so on the basis of it has been again divided into the two types. 
for example, you can see yeah. in but the yeah the the flow of information. Okay, so continuous flow of information. So that will be uh, take to input from the user or it will try to do the output to the user. Okay, so that kind of continuation will be happen. So in Java, there are two type of streams are there, byte stream and another one is character stream. Okay, byte stream and character streams. Byte means what? You know that byte means what? The 8 bit combination we are trying to use to store your information. And character bit means what? We are using the D2 byte data. Okay, so it is 16 bit uh, information we are trying to store. Okay, so when we are, uh, we want to take the input either in byte format or character format, on the basis of that, you need to decide which class you need to use to take the input or give the output. Okay, so the byte stream is again divided into the two types. You can say the inputs. Next output. Output stream. Input stream and output stream. Now uh, for writing, we are using the write. and read okay so read and write these are the two different classes okay so which have so when you want to take the input at the time you are using the input stream and when you want to do the output at the time you are using the output stream similar manner so when we want to take the input okay so uh, we are using the the that is input so when you want to read the data or take the input from the file or the from the network sources at the time we are using the read class okay and you when you want to give the desired output on a particular file you want to store that data into the particular location on the internet in the specific format at the time we are using the write class okay so that is your output file okay so, uh, when you want to take the input, uh, so at the time we can use any one of these approach. So, this input stream and output stream again, there is a very big hierarchy there, very big trees there. Okay, so that we will be see in the some upcoming lectures. But uh, for that, uh, for this point. We want to just take the input from the user by using the scanner class. Okay, so the scanner class is one of the class which is comes under the category of your stream classes. Okay, so the scanner class is defined under the util package. Therefore, you need to use the import Java dot util dot scanner. Okay, semicolon then. You can write the class name. Class. You can say. Put demo. Okay. This is your class name. Just save this program. No dot Java. Okay. Write the main method public static void bracket closing bracket receive the parameter of type stream the format. Okay, so now uh, whenever you want to use this uh, this scanner class, so at the time. You are able to get the object of the scanner class SC equal to enough into bracket. Okay, then semicolon. Okay, 
So whenever we are trying to create a or call uh, the scanner constructor, at the time we need to specify from which location you want to take the input, either from the network location, from the file, or from the the input devices. Okay. So at this moment you want to take the input from the system input devices. Okay. So therefore we can pass the value as a system dot in. Okay. So you know that we are using the system dot out, right? So it is output device, right? And uh, in similar manner we are trying to use the device by using system dot. Okay. Sometimes you want to give the error. So all the time we are using the system dot ERR. Okay. So in this manner, we can use the, the predefined uh, resources for this specific application. Okay. So I will simply comment this one. We have created the object of the scanner class scanner sc equal to new scanner system dot in. And we want to take the input of each primitive data types. Okay, so I will just simply uh, copy the primitive data type variables. Okay, so we have used just have uh, uh, declared this variable. Okay. And we want to give the message to the user, please be enter the specific data in specific format. Okay. So we can write the system dot out dot internal. Okay. And here we are using giving the message, please enter the value. Okay. Try to specify instead of short, we will just post the byte value. Okay. But, uh, we need to store uh, whatever the value will be entered by the user. That value should be stored into the B variable. Okay. So you know that. So we, uh, we need to use the assignment operator to assign the value on the memory location of this B type of byte type of variable. Okay. So this assignment value will be used. Okay. So how can I, how we can access? So we can call the methods for each data type. Okay. So for example, now we are using the sorry. SC. SC is the, the object of this scanner class. Now we will just use one method into this class. Okay. So SC dot next. Okay. This is the method. So by using this method, we can try to access the value. So now whenever we are trying to access this value and trying to store on this data type at the time, it will give the error. OK, so the, what is this error? I will show you first and then we will proceed further. OK, so just use Java C. What is the name of our class? Demo Java C. Okay, so it will give the one type of error. Incompatible type string cannot be converted to the byte. Okay, so that kind of error is there. So means what? So by using this value, by using this next method, we are able to just receive the string type of data. Okay, so when such a type of different type of data will be coming towards you. So at that time you need to convert the string type of data into the byte type of data. OK, so for that you need to use the wrapper classes. OK, so uh, here we will just use like the. Let's see what will happen. dot there are so many methods are there to convert the uh, this type of value into the different format okay 
so parse white parsing method okay so that we will try to cover in the upcoming lectures also so here uh, java so please enter the byte value okay so we have written one two one two three okay now we are trying to display this value okay so just use system dot out dot print alien value of b equal to plus b okay you just recompile your program and execute so in this manner okay so when you uh, when such kind of uh, data different data type is coming towards you so at the time you need to convert this string type of value into the specific data type okay so here we are using the parsing method okay so the parsing method for format is very simple okay so you can say that the upper class dot okay then the wrapper class so in this manner we are trying to convert these uh, different type of data into the another data type okay so there is uh, one restriction for that one so when you want to convert into the byte string so at the time the data should be in a specific format it is in allowed range okay so if it is not in allowed range then it will also do the error okay or or you can use the specific data type or specific method to access the specific type of data okay so instead of this uh, wrapping conversion we can use the another variable okay so instead of that i say the b1 okay so here we will just try to do one another method to be you uh, try to store into the b1 okay so instead of trying to converting uh, or by with the help of your wrapper class okay so this byte is the wrapper class so by with by using this byte class we are trying to convert the string value into the byte and storing into the b okay but instead of this conversion we are trying to just use the method which is available and uh, under the uh, scanner class like the uh, we can say the And we will try to just to display that value. Your program and execute it. So first value I will write to be 50, second value in the 60. Okay, so in this manner also, you will get the specific value by using the specific method. Okay, so next byte. So for each data type, there is a the separate method has been given under the scanner class or if you don't have any options. So at the time you can use this byte or this parsing method or the wrapper class method to convert your specific data type into the another data type. OK. So I will just uh, show you the demonstration to how to read the, the data by using the each type and it's its method each different method okay this we have used the byte type of data now we want to in the short value value so this short value should be stored into the yes, right? Yes, right. So yes, C sorry. Yes, C dot 
Next, now you can you can predict that one. OK, so what kind of method will be there to access the short type of data? OK, so here whenever you want to access the byte type of data, so next byte is method. OK, so here yes, see next there is a. Uh, we want to access short type of data, so this method will be there. OK, short. And we will just try to print that value. Yes. And execute. So in this manner, we can access it. Then uh, for integer type, we will use like this also same manner. Okay. Okay, so it will be stored into the i. Let's see dot next inst instead of short, we need to use the next int. Okay. And then just try to print the value. Of uh, okay, then uh, what is next? Uh, long, a long type of data, yeah. long value. So instead of int, just use the long, it will be stored into the L. Okay, and when we are trying to print that value. So, okay. so manner of float value next for float manner for double. So here instead of the right. So here uh, for float we need to use the another variable here. Else float double. It means long, long we have to work. Okay, float double. After that we need to receive the character. Okay, so we can move. Okay, so C equal to next. We need to use the William. Okay. The variable of William is PL. Next, I think not sure about this Boolean method. So let's see what will happen here. First, we will try to print this value for each type of variable. Value of i, n. After that, it will float. By b. For William VM. Okay. And now we are trying to access each data type value from the user by using the scanner class. Okay. And now try to display. Okay, so just to recompile your program. Where is it? Cannot find the symbol. Okay. So here, instead of the next cat, I think the character method is there. Okay. So we will just check it. Which kind of method is there for the character type? Okay. So I will take the help of Google for the scanner class. Scanner class methods. 
okay so for character type which kind of method is there we need to check it So there is a no method which is used for the character type. Okay. So the character only receives the one character at a time. That's why nothing that is not there. But you can use the next method. Okay. So instead of this, you can just use the next method to scan the data. Okay. And you can just assign that value. OK, so for that, you, for that you need to convert that uh, string value into the. Into the what? Into the your uh, character type. OK, so for that you need to use the wrapper class. OK, so these are the only methods available under the scanning class. Next in which will be used to take the input from the user of type integer. OK, next float. So float type of integer received. Next boolean, it takes the boolean type of integer value. Next line, it is used to take the the line by line data will be read from the user. OK, so you can use this method also next line. OK, so there is a difference between the next line and next. OK, so it will receive the data after the space bar also. But it, in next, it will just receive the data up to the up to the, the one space. OK. So that we will see a little bit later on, and these are the the various constructors uh, available under the scanner class, and these are the another class methods which is used to specific purpose like close, delimit, find line, find width, horizontal, as next. Okay, so we are not interested in the remaining uh, methods. Okay. So uh, for this moment, we, we are we want to just make the concentration on how to take the input from the different type of data types. Okay. So here, so for character type, we just need to use the next. Let's see what will happen here. And just recompile your program. So Java C input. So again, it will give the incompatible prime uh, type. Strings cannot be converted to cat. So for that, you need to use the specific wrapper class. Okay, so we can use the character dot parse. Okay, parse cat. Symbol first. Yeah. So we will just reach a bit of him. Or about a spinning. Okay, so here we are not taking the proper input. Just confirm the the parsing method. OK, parsing method for data type in Java. OK, what is the parsing method? OK, that's it. OK, so caret is the method which can be used to convert the specific type. OK, so we will try to use that one. So whatever the value is here, that value will be looks like this. We will just check it, or otherwise we will just use the index number value to show that value. So just just the one variable of type string s equal to 
to use in this manner. So let's see now. What is the semicolon is expected? Okay, so you need to write the semicolon. I. So this variable is already defined in method in Steam. So you need to use another uh, variable. You can say the okay. So here. Mm -hmm. Now execute your program and try to enter the value for each rate spike. You can say 124. Or fluid. Character, you can say yes. And William, you, you need to write either true or false. Okay. So, in this manner, you can get the input from the user and try to display the output. Okay. After you are able to get the input and output, uh, so you can process the data according to your requirement. Okay. So we are running out of time. So today we will stop here and we will meet by tomorrow. Okay. So if you have any questions, any doubt, you can ask. Otherwise, we will stop. Any questions?